This week, we're catching up with two sets of first-time buyers, searching in a market that was making us queasy. When are we going to get off this roundabout, Phil? I'm getting a bit dizzy. Our ship started on course. Fantastic. We're almost sold on the first one. But there was a titanic disaster looming. I'm really struggling to find out why I feel so negatively about it. Leaving us looking for the life raft. I'm just rubbing some of my luck off on you. Oh, thank you very much. I might need it. <laughs> so we had to try to turn tragedy into triumph. Hang on, where's the kitchen? It's all changed. This is stunning. This week, we're back visiting two very different sets of house hunters. Newlyweds, Carl and Liz, had left behind their hectic London lifestyle and were looking for a marital home. Whereas best mates Mike and Jamie were pooling their resources and trying to buy it in London to enjoy the city life. Sound easy? <laughs> it wasn't. I was on the property hunt in pretty Hertfordshire. With its tranquility and easy access to London, it's particularly enticing territory to those on the march from the capital. And the county's popular city of St Albans was where loved-up newlyweds Liz and Carl wanted to set up home. They met in 2012, and a timely 12 months later, they had wed. People say that you know when it's right, and it's all pretty quickly worked out that, you know, this was, this was the one. It's all been um, just pretty dreamy, really. The only nightmare was Carl's three-hour round trip to Amersham, where he works in car leasing. So eight months ago, they moved 40 miles north from their rental flat in Greenwich to St Albans. Living here has halved his commute while keeping Liz close enough to her job in London as director of a military charity. Having sensibly rented first to get a feel for it, they're happy St Albans has a similar buzz to Greenwich and are now very eager to buy. Now we're married, settled down, and now is the time to make that decision as quickly as possible. Yeah. Find our first home together. Although they're now officially settled down, this is not a forever nest, just a three to five year home, as they're not planning on swapping socialising for slippers just yet. We'd like to be near a nice pub, very important for Mr P. Um, walking distance. Walking nice distance pub, of a nice pub. And ideally, the house itself will have enough space to entertain friends. But other than that, they're keeping their options wide open. I think there's very little that we would rule out. Hmm, let's see if I can't coax a little clarity out of them. It's going to be much easier for you guys if you're clear about what the specifics are that you yeah. want. Our preference would be for a house. That's not to say if we saw the right apartment, would yeah. that we wouldn't take it. I'm desperately trying to narrow your search <laughs> down and give it focus, and, and you, you're trying to open it up. We almost want the character house with the open plan feel of the modern modern flat. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Kirsty, help! <laughs> Best of British, Phil. Thanks. At least Liz and Carl are clear that their top budget is 450 grand. For that, they'd want a tip-top two-bed property with some character within commuting distance of both Amersham and London. Liz, in particular, wants private outdoor space and walking distance to a pub is important to Carl. Well, that's what I think they're saying at this point, but I'm not convinced this is going to be a straightforward search. And while I puzzled that out in St Albans, Kirsty was on a search of her own 30 miles away in the ever-expensive Big Smoke, East London, to be precise. Trying to find basketballing best friends Jamie and Mike a house to share. A pretty tall order. Mike, a postdoctoral researcher at University College London, and Jamie, a social research account manager, met at uni in Birmingham. As London prices skyrocketed, combining salaries to find a joint home in the capital was a slam dunk decision. We can just get so much more for our money putting our heads together. I think we just thought it was a really good idea. Good idea in theory. More and more friends are buying this way. But co ownership as mates is a whole different ballgame. Oh! So we haven't ever lived together, but I, I mean, I slept on the sofa for five weeks or so when I first moved back to London. We've been on holiday together. Let's share a bed for a week. I got the broken side of the bed. <laughs> what he means is that he broke the bed, but... <laughs> That's not confirmed. <laughs> We're going to have the most fun. It's going to be really, really good. 
Well, with any good partnership, there's always a little compromise. Don't I know it? I really need space. Mike's got 160 odd pairs of sneakers. Any potential loft or cellar space, I think he might need. <laughs> and there is the compromise. One has to make room for the other one's shoes, naturally. We've had a terrible time trying to find a place so far. Um, it's still been fun, even though we haven't achieved anything yet. Well, I'm here to see that change. Gents, we are in an eel and pie house. And before I open my pie hole, too <laughs> wide. Sum up what you're looking for and why you want it to be here. We picked East London mostly because it's a, an area we're familiar with. We were looking for a kind of a period property, a three-bed house. We would be ideal. Obviously, we only need two. Size of those bedrooms? I would say above size for me, I know Mike's got storage issues, is the equal size of the two rooms so we can both feel equal in the house as we're kind of co-owners rather than somebody being the dominant yeah. alpha male of the house. That is quite difficult. What's the real under no circumstances factor? I've got a thing for safety um, and the, the general area. Just but... stand up for a second. <laughs> right, remind me how tall you are. Um, I'm just under six foot three. Um... Who exactly do you think is going to mess with you on the way home? <laughs> um... This is the problem, scared of the unknown. <laughs> you, do, you don't know what's out there. Obviously, we're going to have visitors, so kind of worrying about the loved ones as well as, as, well as us. Hokey dokey. I think that's it. Excellent. I just need honesty from you two. We can do that. The boys have got a budget of £300,000. They'd like a minimum of two bedrooms, preferably of equal size. They want a quick and easy commute to work in central London. Jamie would like the area to feel safe. And Mike needs plenty of storage space. In Hertfordshire, I'm starting the search for Liz and Carl's first marital home. Their fairy tale romance is one thing, but the wicked witch that's the property market is quite another. Close to London with an upbeat vibe and architectural charm, Liz and Carl's preferred location of St Albans was named in a recent survey as the third most expensive place to live in the UK outside of the capital. And despite an average property price of just over 450,000, up 18% in the last year, homes here can sometimes sell over a weekend, so we need to get moving. My first property for the newlyweds is an early 1900s cottage in the very desirable Bernard's Heath conservation area of St Albans, close to the high street hustle and bustle thereafter, so bang on location-wise. I really like the outside of it. I like the bay window. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like the street. Top mark so far, Pip. This terraced cottage offers character and more space than they might imagine, with two bedrooms and a bathroom upstairs and two separate living areas downstairs plus Liz's preferred private garden. They say they're open to anything. Would they be open to doing work? It's been a rental property, and there is some upgrading required, but that's doable, as it's 25 grand under budget at £425,000. I thought this was going to be a lot worse condition than it is. I quite like it. It feels nice and open. Obviously, it doesn't have any furniture in it yet. Fine, let's see some more. There's additional living space off the kitchen in what was originally the bathroom. Wow! And if you've got planning permission, there's potential to extend into the side return and create a wonderful dining kitchen. It's fantastic. We're almost sold on the first one. <laughs> That's fine. Early lunch. <laughs> I'd hold off on asking for the menu just yet, Pip. In moving the bathroom from downstairs to up, compromises have been made, especially in the second bedroom. What's that all about? OK. A ceiling window does bring extra light, but yes, the spare room does not have a lot of room to spare. I wonder how big it actually is. This is a great house for them. It gets them where they want to be in St Albans. The stumbling block there has to be the size of the second bedroom and whether that's sufficient. How'd you get on upstairs? Mm, silence. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't that bad, was it? No. no. Uh, the second bedroom, I, I, I thought that needs a little bit more thought, whether that would mm. work. I mean... That really is right. small. What you get in return is the bathroom being upstairs and you've got the extra living space or dining room. Yeah. And a sunny garden. It is today. I'm sensing a possible maybe, Phil. No, I like it. Ready for the next one? Yep. Yes. Come on, then. 
Moving on. Hmm. Given this pair said they wouldn't rule anything out, I suspect everything could be a possible maybe, unless we manage to focus their search. We? I'm afraid that's up to you, Mr Spencer. And it's up to you to find somewhere slamming at best mates Jamie and Mike in East London. The first property I'm taking them to is less than a ten-minute walk from Leytonstone Station. So right in the heart of one of their favourite areas. Jamie, would you feel safe walking down the street I mean, late I've at got night? Zero issues with the street. And more importantly, would you feel that your government or sisters might be safe? I think down they the would street? actually approve. Really? Which is, um, oh, which that's rare. good. Well, that's the loved ones on board. Now, just the small matter of selling it to the boys. This Victorian terrace has the two large bedrooms thereafter. The kitchen and living space is ample but not massive, but that's the trade-off for its prime location and amazing views over Wanstead Flats. We're first to get a viewing. It hasn't even gone on the market yet. But the guide is 275 to 285,000 pounds, well within the boys' 300 grand budget. There's two huge advantages to this flat. The road and the outlook. Yeah. Wow. That is Wanstead Flats. That's the dream, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it is the dream. It's a really nice view. So, we're in the area you like. It's about getting out of the house quickly to get to work, being near the basketball hoops, which are down the road, having a fridge big enough to hold the beers. Yeah. I guess, like, from day to day, uh, day to day lifestyle, yeah, it would be like that. Yeah. Well, my work is done here, Jen. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like we both may have nailed it in our first properties, Kirsty. Hang on, it's not in the bag yet, Phil. Jamie's looking uncertain. No, I'm, 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 I'm trying to think of it um, as we would have it. Could I you think... imagine yourselves having a dinner party? OK, Actually, well, don't answer that question. <laughs> hey, forget it. That was a stupid yeah. question. I can't even believe I asked that question. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think this would be really, really lovely if we were a loving couple and if you had, like, one nice sofa you'd like to cuddle up on with the TV. I think this place is a little on the small side for our basketballing brothers-in-arms. Let's hope they find the space they want in the bedrooms. And a, frankly, enormous master bedroom. Wow. Yeah, this is, um, quite silly in its size. <laughs> it's, it's, it's huge, but... Yes. What are you thinking? I agree with Jamie, I think. It does seem... But maybe it's because the way it's laid out, and in fact it is yeah. a, a small family home, it does seem more like for a couple. Go and have a last scoot around. You haven't looked at that second bedroom. Okie dokie. So it's the perfect location for the lads and a great flat. But Jamie has his concerns. I think this room, like someone's going to be living in luxury. That's the problem Kirsty's got here. Friends' search requirements are very different to couples. Equality is key. And equal-sized bedrooms, well, that's a tough thing to find. It doesn't look like location is going to win out over space. These big lads need more room, and I need to find it. We're catching up with two sets of first-time buyers who were searching in pretty pricey postcodes. Big buddies Mike and Jamie were clubbing together to get their feet on the property ladder in the east end of London. And newlyweds Carl and Liz were desperate to buy their first marital home in the popular commuter city of St Albans. My first property in their preferred area was well received by Carl and Liz in many ways. Wow! But a search narrowed to sought after St Albans means paying a high price for sizeable compromises. So I'm planning on broadening their horizons. They're open to both location and style. But for my second property, I'm testing them geographically and swapping Hertfordshire for Buckinghamshire and its pretty market town of Chesham. It's very convenient for Carl's work and there's a tube link to central London for Liz. Here they can get a lot more for their money. The average property price is around 100 grand less than in St Albans. And another bonus is that the straight-talking Kirsty's joining us. First thoughts about where we are? I have absolutely no idea where we are that, that in relation to London, but other than that, very excited to be here. If it was a little village green and there was a nice little pub here, you know, I might feel a little bit different. It does feel a little bit out of it. Let's have a look. After you. Whoops. Have you got a good handle on this search, Phil? I'm sure you'll help me get a grip if I don't. 
Carl may have a change of heart once he sees they get 200 square feet more here than in St Albans. Two equal sized bedrooms and a bathroom upstairs. Plus, if their priorities were to shift focus to a family, there's potential to convert the loft. Downstairs, the proportions are equally generous and stylish, with a decked area outside that leads to a communal garden. And at offers over £350,000, it should come in well under budget. You get this, all of this, for £350. Wow. Yeah, that's more interesting. Wow. When you say that. But would we really miss that walking out the front door, walking down to the pub that we have now? Well, the price might be right, but he really does want to be close to a cold pint. But I don't think you get to decide on a house based on that. Hopefully a bit of time with Liz will help us get to the bottom of what they really need from a home. Promise me you'll tread softly. Baby steps, obviously, Phil. Starting with Liz's thoughts on the outside space. Um, it's quite overlooked. I think nude sunbathing probably, probably wouldn't be on the cards. Out. Yeah. Mm, well, that is disappointing, naturally, but um, <laughs> it's a lovely, lovely decking area. And don't forget the communal garden. It's great from a family perspective. I see what you did there. And is this planning to be a family house? Well, I think we wouldn't rule anything out. Um, right. But it's not on the cards sort of immediately. Immediate or not, you don't want the deck stacked against you in terms of house size. A forced move in a few years could cost Liz and Carl around £25,000. So the longer they can stay somewhere, the better. I hope you're making that clear upstairs, Phil. Just about to play my hand. You've got the option to go up into the loft. Right. So in terms of longevity, yeah. this house really could grow with you. You're right, this house would enable us to be able to stay longer if our lifestyle changed in the future. They really aren't ruling anything out. Style of house, area, future plans. Mm. That's a nice room. Well, I'm trying to get him to think longer term, but I don't know if I'm really Me succeeding. Too. It's difficult to plan for the future. I mean, you know, you know, none of us know what the future holds. Is it better now to buy something like this, which is the, the budget is very attractive, yeah. and know that if things change, we can yeah. stay here? Tough discussions upstairs, but in the garden, it's time for Pip to own up that he agrees with my way of thinking. You always thought that people didn't focus enough on when they were having kids, and now <laughs> you finally had to admit it. For years, you have... I've felt like that all the time I've ever known you. I've just been hiding it. <laughs> So now you've, oh, you've outed me. Of course, not everyone has to think the way I do, but it is our duty to point out the pitfalls of a short-term buy. How are you two getting on? Moved okay. in yet? <laughs> <laughs> not quite. It's definitely an option. It's very difficult because there's a lot of stuff within this conversation that's none of our business. Yeah. I don't often say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm absolutely gobsmacked, Kirsty. This is definitely food for thought. Ask me, you've got a banquet of a chat coming on. <laughs> and if their priorities change, will it be feast or famine for the rest of our search? Back with the boys in London, it's time for me to give Kirsty a helping hand. The second property for Jamie and Mike is in East Ham, an area they have tried searching in before, but with no luck. How are you feeling about the position of it? It's about a 15-minute walk to either of the train stations. I think that's fine. Yeah, um, 15 minutes is fine. OK. Good news, it may not be as close to transport or trendy bars, but unlike property one, space won't be an issue here. There are three double bedrooms and a large open plan living dining area with the kitchen at the back, plus a south facing garden. All that bang on budget at £300,000. Well done, Kirsty. So, straight into the front room. As you can see, it's about space. First thoughts? Uh, so far, it's really big. This is, like, one of the nicest places I've seen. Yeah. Maybe the trade-off is location, and we didn't realise how little people wanted to come this far away from the tube. Got it in one, Jamie. Well, he goes straight to the top of Kirsty's house hunting class. Loads of space for a dining table. I know, they give lots of dinner parties to the lads. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the space to do things together, yeah. do things apart, have different friends over. Room for a baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what should we call it? Bill or Kirsty? Imagine one big happy family. Let's see if the smiles continue in the garden. 
It's good, it's low maintenance, you could have barbecues and stuff out here. Um, you both seem very positive about it. Yeah, yeah. I was giving myself up for it being a, not as nice inside, basically. Okay. A lot more basic, kind of a dishevelled student house, I guess. Let's go and see some more. How about that? Both boys liking it so far. Space seems to be their selling point. Well, they are 12 foot 6 if you join them together. Bedroom one. I think what's really interesting about this place, when you've got yeah. so much house, the size of room isn't, isn't that important, not as important. No. I'm uh, continually surprised by this place. Bless, he's a model student. Can I get a Jamie every week, please? Is Mike as happy as Jamie is? Yes, absolutely. Thrilled? Thrilled. OK. Well, I think it's absolutely inspired property search. OK, I'm going to do something quickly. <laughs> I'm just rubbing some of my luck off on you. Oh, thank you very much. I might need it. <laughs> Appreciated, Kirsty. Though nobody likes a show off. As the same as the other ones, it's massive. You're right, Phil. And although this place gives them everything they want, I've got a feeling something's worrying Mike. I'm really struggling to find out why, why I feel so negatively about it, cos there's <laughs> really nothing... There's nothing wrong with it. It's an odd one. Yeah. Odd indeed. What is going on? I think it's maybe the first time we disagreed. <laughs> yes. Oh, no! <laughs> well, I'm, I'm enthusiastic about most things, so I can see um, the positive aspects. And I thought for Mike, the yeah. size would overrule everything. Um, apparently not. No. So, I mean, I really like the house. Um, the space is amazing. But I think the overall commute from here would be much longer than it would be from the, the flat that we saw in Leytonstone. The thing is that this, <clears throat> in Leighton Stone, it would be at 340 or 350. Maybe you should have kept some of that luck for yourself, eh, Kirstall's? Shame. Obviously, size matters. But for Mike, not as much as the commute. Back in St Albans, it seems our gentle prodding about any future family aims has really hit home with Liz and Carl. I think. What we're probably coming to the conclusion is that that family plan is very, very likely to be the plan. That means thinking about how they'd manage the mortgage if they had just a single salary. Anything around the 400 would down. be... Yeah, yeah, down. Just just under 400 would start to make things easier mm. to plan. Um, yeah. I think that is very, very sensible, but it does um, throw some fairly large challenges into my search, given that I've got an absolute blinder to show you in St Albans at 450,000. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All laughing aside, it's a whole new search, and the properties we've seen so far don't work for it. And with 50 grand less to spend, they still want the same kind of house. At least two beds, character and outside space. So after a phoning frenzy, the only thing I can do is push them out further. For our third property, we're heading half an hour from St Albans to Tring. There's a mini St Albans vibe to this market town, which should definitely appeal, and living here would mean a 20-minute drive to work for Carl and a 40-minute train ride to London for Liz. I found them an end-of-terrace Victorian cottage in the sought-after Tring Triangle conservation area, a mere stone's throw from the high street hustle and bustle they love. Didn't I do well? It's not about you, Phil. It's not about you. It is, I think, a really very pretty cottage. Wonderful. First impressions, it looks amazing. Yeah, looks lovely. Just back on the market for a day after a sale fell through, this house may well surprise with three bedrooms upstairs, kitchen and living on street level, and a converted cellar. This is not your ordinary two-up, two-down Victorian terrace. This is a Phil Spencer three-up, two-down, and two-down-again terrace. I like the way you're selling it, Kirstels. The asking price is just under 400,000, the very top of their new budget. Small, but perfectly formed. Yeah. I like really it. Really lovely. The style and finish throughout is likely to be right up Liz and Carl's street. Oh. Fantastic. That's a nice little. Added another layer, isn't it? Three bedrooms is a major bonus, although they're not huge, and Liz does like plenty of wardrobe space. If it didn't have those, yeah. then we'd be in a different ballpark. Yeah. But the fact that it's got one that could actually have someone staying in and still have the other one with dressing room space. The house is offering quite a lot 
Mm. And they've not even seen the bonus in the basement yet. You have a look downstairs. Two rooms. See what you could do with them. One of them hey. could be a wonderful playroom. <laughs> <laughs> you really are starting to sound like me, Phil. The property is actually being marketed as having three to four bedrooms because of the cellar conversion. Down there is a good size utility room. Oh, fantastic. It's a bit more than I expected. Yeah. And wait, there's more. Oh, wow. Gosh. And an extra. Ah, oh, so this is where they've got their TV. Uh, okay. Carl and Liz are making all the right noises. Absolute shocker for my properties that they've reduced the budget. But at least they finally had the conversation about whether or not a family is part of the plan. You seem quite positive. Yeah. Quite open-minded to it. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's lovely. It is. It's a lovely house. And I think it, I found it quite surprising going downstairs because I wasn't expecting it to A, be as big or as well developed. Mm or offer us as much as it does. They seem enthused, but with such a radical reduction in budget, I hope this property offers enough to bring my search to an end. This week, we're back with two sets of house hunters yearning to buy their first homes. Friends Jamie and Mike needed a first-time flat in East London for 300 grand. And newlyweds Carl and Liz had reduced their budget to 400 grand for their future-proofed property in Hertfordshire. But the housing market in these sought-after southerly spots was making our heads spin. When are we going to get off this roundabout, Phil? I'm getting a bit dizzy. <laughs> Two properties in and best buds, Jamie and Mike, are struggling with what it is they want. I've got one more property to put into play, a house in Upton Park. I've addressed Mike's commuting concerns, this one's a mere 500 yards from the tube. But it's in an area they are not that familiar with. Positive about the street? Oh, no, I do. I'm more drawn to this street than the last one, for sure. And the last one was nice, so... Oh, okay. Good start. And this Victorian terrace is big, with three bedrooms, two reception rooms and a modern kitchen. It's got the added bonus of a converted loft and outside space, too. It's on the market at £285,000. 15 grand under budget. So, in we come. So, a little bit smaller than the last house, but there's a, a room in the attic, but essentially wow. it's, it's a three bed with two bathrooms. Sold. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take two. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. And what we've seen so far. Yesterday, they started positively, but Mike ended up changing his mind. I just hope we don't have the same result today. So, nice bathroom. Yeah, again, it's great. It's great. Yeah. It's all just super, super positive, positive. Yeah, yeah. really positive. Even Mike, yeah. sensible Mike. Is... Ne no. Negative Mikey. No, I, I won't have that, Jamie. I don't call him negative Mike. He is not negative. He is just a bit different. A different is good. <laughs> different is good. No, no, I really like it. Yeah. I'm waiting for the butt. Trust me, Phil, there won't be a butt. Master bedroom. Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm worried about the second room. <laughs> if, if we get through that, then we are all in. Yeah. <laughs> See if you can find the downside to this house and come back and tell me what you think. OK. Now that's the look of a confident woman. So I think I'd be happy if both the rooms were, like, this big and having this one as a... Yeah. Yeah. Keeps winning. Yeah. Stay, stay, winning. stay winning. Up some park. Yeah. As I hoped, living space, tick. Bedrooms, tick. And they've not seen all of it yet. Wow. I didn't expect this either. This is perfect, I think. Yeah. I was um, a bit confused after yesterday, not sure if I knew what I actually wanted from my house, yeah. but I think this might be it. I really hope so. But I'm not letting it go to my head. They've been this positive before. What do you want to do now? Um, have it. Yeah. Right. We'd like to have it now, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doffing my cap to you, Kirsty. You seem to have found a perfect fit for this towering twosome. Over in Hertfordshire, newlyweds Liz and Carl have fallen for Tring and want to revisit the charming end of terrace property there. Looks yep. good still. Yeah, still looks good. 
Having changed their criteria halfway through the search, it's doubly important on this second viewing that Liz and Carl can be confident it's a home they could choose to expand into. There's the basic size already here with the downstairs to really think about doing something. I'm so glad they can see what this house offers with its upstairs-downstairs configuration. I think this one is slightly wider, but obviously it's got the chimney breadth. Really? I think Captain Spencer's got his ship on course this time. Let's hope so, first mate Allsop. Liz and Carl have fallen for the house and are keen to make an offer. We need to be quick. It's only been on the market for 24 hours, but they've already had several viewings. In our favour is the fact that the vendors are in a chain and their previous sale has fallen through. So they're slightly between a rock and a hard place because they need a buyer quickly and a good one. However, interest is mounting, you know, they're seeing people come through the door, so I don't think, um, I don't think it's going to be a steal. The asking price is 400 grand, bang on their revised budget amount. But Carl and Liz want to do some bargaining. I'd have to sort of have a think about the value for money we're getting coming out here mm. if we start to start this with a four. 390, I think let's go yeah. for it. Uh, Caroline, it's Phil Spencer. They would be willing to pay the 390. Yes. Okay. Understood. Thanks, Caroline. Bye. Bye. If I was a betting man, I would put money on. She'll ring back and say, they want 395. You'll have to do better. Thank you. Right. Drink. Yeah. All we can do is wait. Over in East London, the boys have also made a decision about the three-bedder in Upton Park. Let's make that call. Adam, it's Kirsty Ilsop. Um, that property is on an office over 285. What is your client wanting to get for it? But after chatting with the agent, things aren't as straightforward as I'd hoped. There are 21 appointments booked in for Saturday for different people to look round the house. But he did say, I think 290 is her figure. I think obviously we want to get it for as little as we can, but 290 is definitely doable, so... But just as we're settling on how much to offer, the agent calls me back. Hello? Yes. Right. OK, bye. Good news, bad news. The bad news is that it's a higher figure than we thought. OK. The good news is that she has said she will cancel the viewings for 295. Yeah. OK. Are they willing to meet that price? It's a big decision for the boys. I would probably like to split the two values and go in at 292 and a half. What do you think your client would say if I said we could go to 292500? Yep. Looks like they're holding out for the 295. I am happy to agree a sale at £295,000. OK, brilliant. Bye. The house is yours. Perfect. Excellent. <laughs> can't really toast with cake and some half-eaten shortbread. I think you absolutely can. <laughs> Celebrating the purchase of a house with edible glitter. That's what I like to see. Now that's called having your cake and eating it. <laughs> Result. <laughs> In Tring, as predicted, the vendors have refused 390. So if Carl and Liz want to stop the raft of second viewings from other interested parties, they're going to have to bid more. OK, let's push it to 395, but we'd like washing machine, kitchen, fridge, freezer, you know, as much of that as we could get. Yeah. Should it? Yeah. Yes, please. Thank Good you. decision, well made. <laughs> <laughs> Our best and final offer of £395,000 is going in, and we don't have to wait long. Do we have a deal? That's fantastic. Bye-bye. You have... Bought a house! Excellent! Yay! Oh. Well done. Thank well you, thank done. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank Your you very house much. hunt is officially over. Yay! The twists and turns were all worth it in the end. It's a great result for Liz and Carl. Fabulous. Well done. Very exciting, yes. Many Cheers. congratulations. Thank Cheers. you. Thank you. 
Six weeks on, Jamie and Mike are moving towards completion and are massively relieved to have found their first London pad. Before our week with Kirsty, house hunting was getting kind of more and more unbearable. And we're slowly moving further and further out of where we wanted to be. When they do move in, Jamie will get the master bed and Mike the two smaller bedrooms. It was kind of suggested by Kirsty. I guess it was a really good idea, so we was like, yeah, we'll do what Kirsty tells us. <laughs> Whatever Kirsty says. <laughs> I guess she's a good mix of kind of tough love and good advice. I couldn't have put it better myself. For Carl and Liz, the move to Tring is likely to happen within a month. Currently, we're sort of you know, preparing to move now, start beginning to pack things up. They exchange in a week's time and can't wait to make the house their home. In fact, it's all we talk about. Carl's never been more interested in paint. Say so interested. <laughs> We're also looking at exciting things like boilers, uh, <laughs> so it's not all it's not all glamour. Glamour's overrated, Carl. To have Phil and Kirsty involved in the search was good fun. There's a slight sort of relaxing side to spending less money than you have to, meaning that you know we've got you know more options for the future. It brought in that expertise at a time when you know it was perfect. It's been such a gift, really. And as a long-term home, hopefully a gift that will keep on giving. A year and a half after Kirsty and I helped basketballing buddies Mike and Jamie, they're loving their new up-and-coming area of Upton Park and owning their first ever London pad together. I took a long time to buy, I'm a lot older than Jamie. Um, and I think I was a bit scared of a big financial commitment, but actually it's not as big a deal as you, as you think it's going to be before you do it. It's probably quite a big commitment though. Yeah, it's a massive commitment. <laughs> <laughs> But having fallen in love with the house, they both truly committed to making it fantastic and spent six months turning decor that wasn't totally to their taste into totally tasteful. When we first got the keys, the big moment of we've got a house was a bit like, we've got that disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it inspired us to do things a little quicker than we might have yeah. if um, it had been just nicer. But it, was, yeah, it wasn't too bad. It's a lot, a lot of work and a lot of time. <laughs> Mike's being nice. <laughs> it was horrible. The boys painstakingly painted every room themselves and sanded all the floorboards, which didn't go that smoothly. Sanding the floor took ages. We kind of cut a bit of cost and just got hand sanders. It looks great, so I'm actually I'm not too sad about that. Lesson learned, though, Jamie. The biggest transformation is the kitchen, which they played a huge part in making look this swish. But that wasn't all plain sailing either. Mike actually ripped out the whole kitchen and, and tossed it away, which is something that um, I couldn't do because you were a bit stronger. But um, <laughs> we actually tiled the floor in the kitchen, which um, Mike was adamant that we were going to do. We didn't have a kitchen for a good solid four months, I don't think. You, seven, eight months. <laughs> it was, um, we ate takeaway for a good eight months. I think I tried every takeaway in the area. It's quite sad. <laughs> So, still not throwing dinner parties, lads. And there was a slight hiccup with the furniture buying, too. We haven't disagreed on anything apart from the sofas, um, which was which was really, tr really tricky. When we were going around sofa buying, we, me and James would see people with tape measures and things, think to ourselves, why on earth are they measuring a sofa? Sofas are sofa sized, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> and it turns out, no, they're not. They, they no. vary quite a lot. <laughs> so we actually got kind of a three-piece set with um, a poof. Uh, which didn't fit in the room, so we spread it out across two rooms. They've also managed to squeeze in Mike's shoemongous trainer collection. The work cost the boys nearly eight grand, but the average house price here has increased a staggering 22% since they bought the flat, which would add a whopping 65 grand to the value if they sold it today. So these lads seem to be on the ball when it comes to making money and are even renting out their third bedroom to cover their renovation costs. Once the money's all been added to our joint account, because we yes. now have those, um, <laughs> we obviously there's a bit of a surplus sometimes. What's quite nice is that we obviously have that card, and if we're going to dinner, romantic meals, if we're at the pub <laughs> and we're buying drinks, um, we can use that. We probably do that a bit too much sometimes. Everything really has paid off for Mike and Jamie. <laughs> we definitely wouldn't be where we are right now without Kirsty. Quite the pin-up, Ms. Allsop. Living together has been really, uh, it's been really good. Yeah, we definitely spend more time with each other. Yeah.
Yeah. We don't really see each other before, actually. <laughs> no, you just kind of drunk. friends. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's so awkward. <laughs> Glad to have made you closer, lads. And in a home that you've made your own and seem super settled in. I can only hope that a year and a bit on, Liz and Carl have the fairy tale ending that they longed for. I'm back finding out how some of our house moves have panned out. And with Mike and Jamie loving life in East London, I want to see if the same can be said of Carl and Liz in Tring. It's been almost 18 months since I helped Carl and Liz. They were perfectly happy with it, but after just a short time of living here, decided that it actually had loads more potential and got stuck into a big project. So I've come back to see how it all turned out. Hello. 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 Nice to see you both. Good to see you. Oh, thanks. Come on in. Come on in. Hang on, where's the kitchen? <laughs> this is a bit different. We decided we didn't need one. Yeah. <laughs> it's all changed. It really has. It's almost unrecognisable. Carl and Liz have removed the wall which once sectioned off the kitchen and by redecorating have created a super stylish open living space. The longer we lived in here, the more obvious it became there was a lot of potential that we just couldn't stand by and not use, really, okay. so... Good for you. Yeah, a bit more space. Space yeah. for entertaining. Space. This is stunning, but what have you done with the kitchen? Come and have a look. look. Downstairs, in what used to be a dark utility room and small separate sitting area, Liz and Carl have removed yet another wall, creating this breathtaking kitchen diner. Oh, <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, my word. You have been hard at work. Really, really smart. You have transformed it. Thank you. It's a good party kitchen. The use of white, their signature style, along with clever lighting, has made this space bright and welcoming. How long did it take? Um, probably from the builders moving into moving out, I think about three months, best part okay. of three months. And meanwhile, you were... Living upstairs in two bedrooms with a microwave and... <laughs> How was it? A few takeaways. Very unglamorous. <laughs> yeah, but well worth it. My favourite room. I spend all my time down here. I love yeah. it. It has completely blown me away because I remembered the house. There were compromises on mm. the size. And now it's all usable space, so we're really pleased. It looks quite expensive. How much did you spend? About 35. OK, 35 to move the kitchen down here. Yeah. 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 But we've done a little bit more as well, upstairs. OK. Can I see? Come yep. and have a look. Upstairs, thanks to a lick of paint, the simple elegance continues in all three bedrooms. But the masters had a more dramatic change. And what's happened in here? Well, this is the first thing we did. And if you remember, the bed used to go this way. So we've taken that chimney yes. breast out just so we can make this a bit more conventional. I yeah. do remember. Again, much more usable space. Yeah. It feels a lot bigger. Yeah, it's it does. These two didn't make my job easy by slashing their budget by 50 grand during our search. But with that money in their pot, they were able to make this place work perfectly for them. Did you manage to get stuck in at all? A lot of painting. I think maybe we underestimated quite how much painting there was to do, and yeah. maybe we, in hindsight, we might not have done that work ourselves. <laughs> Working on your own home, it would have been... That's a kind of bonding thing, yeah. isn't it? Special. Yeah, we definitely feel like... Go on, Carl, it is, it is. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm just thinking, yeah, you know, I think the, the romantic image of first sort of painting <laughs> disappears after the first sort of week of painting, but, yeah, it's nice, it's satisfying when it's done. It was about future-proofing, wasn't it? That was what I remember Kirsty talking at some length about. Plenty of space for anything that might happen Fantastic. in the future. Fantastic. That'll be music to Kirsty's ears. And there's more good news. Since doing the work, the house has been valued at £500,000, an amazing 105 grand more than they forked out for it. We've done a fantastic job. You've nailed it. We're pleased. Yeah, you should It's cosy, it's lovely, it's our house. Not only king and queen of their transformed castle, Tring has got the seal of approval too. And there's one place in particular to thank for that. 
Usual for you? Yes, please. Cheers, Rob. That tankard I see being used. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, essentially you have your own tankard behind the, the bar. It just shows that you're really one of the regulars, one of the locals. In fact, uh, we've got one for you as well, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I like this place already. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Thank you. It was quite an important part of the search, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I didn't actually realise how important it was until we sort of found this pub, really. I'm delighted Liz and Carl have settled in so well. I bet you spent a, an increasing amount of time here while the work was being done down the road. Yeah, a few, a few meals had down yeah, here and absolutely. a few drinks. Yeah. Good and to come here and have a few drinks and then go home to the house. Yeah. It's a bit easier to take. Yeah, <laughs> all the dust and the painting. Yeah. Certainly. Well, good for you, because you bit the bullet. We're ready for whatever the future might bring. Yeah. Whatever that is. Terrific result, though. Many congratulations. A long-term home, not a bad point. Cheers. Liz and Carl have done an absolutely superb job at unlocking the potential of their home. And by joining forces, Mike and Jamie have also been able to use double the manpower to create their perfect house. It may have been a dusty few months all round, but there's no doubt their vision and hard work has paid off. <laughs>